going to mess with that. That thing, Brother Glover broke it last night. Second <laughs> Timothy chapter number two. Don't you love church? Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Glory. Well, I wish you'd tell your face. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Oh. It's good to be in the house of God. Yeah. Yeah. I guarantee you, well, I could think of a lot of other places that you could be, but it's definitely great to be in God's house. Let's stand together for the reading of these few verses. 2 Timothy chapter number 2, verse number 19, Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. Let me just go ahead and say that Satan has used his people to try to rock the foundation of God. But you don't have to worry. Amen. It standeth sure. And the Bible says here, having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. Glory to God. He knows you. If you're a born-again child of God, he knows you. Amen. And the Bible says, And let every one that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Amen. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. I want to be preaching this morning the vessels from this evening, the vessels in a great house, the vessels in a great house. Father, I pray that, Lord, you'll help me this evening, Lord, be with me as I preach. Lord, I pray that uh, you'd give me the words that you would have me to say, and though, Lord, I have preached this message a couple other times before, I pray that, Lord, it will be just as fresh as the first time I preached it. I pray that, Lord, that uh, you would be with my mind and my thoughts, and, uh, Lord, may we tonight just have a great service. I pray that uh, you'll bless the message to come through my Father, and I'm glad that tonight we get to share the platform together. I pray that, Lord, you'll just bless this time we have together now in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. you. May be seated. I love verse, verse number 20. It says, but in a great house. But in a great house. Can I go on record and say that tonight you're in a great house. You're in a great house. You see, the church is compared to as being a great house. Uh, I've been to some great houses. I've been inside some great houses. I'll never forget the man, uh, Roy Pring, who gave us our property a uh, multimillionaire in the city of Colorado Springs. My dad took me in to that man's great house. He has a great house. Uh, I've been by some great houses. Uh, I stood outside of a fence last year in Washington, D.C. and looked at the White House. The White House is a great house. It's a great house. But Frank, can I tell you that there's nothing greater than the house of God. There's nothing greater than God's house. The church is compared to a great house. The church is a great house because it's the temple of God. Can I tell you that? Right now, you're in God's temple. Uh, the church is a palace where God and his word rules. Uh, it's his castle. It's where his truth is defended. It's where his truth is preached. Uh, it's where uh, the man of God gets behind the sacred desk and grooms the people of God to equip them with the weapons that they're going to need to go ahead and war the good fight uh, as born-again children of God. May I tell you that the church is God's mansion house. It is his castle. It's his palace. It's his temple. It's his armory. I thank God tonight that I'm standing in a great house. I'm standing in a great house. As long as I can remember from a child, I've been in a great house. I can always remember my mama and daddy. I now I, I don't know, but I, I, I know it's, uh, it's true, for they tell me that even when I was a little baby, I was in the great house. Uh, when I was in the nursery, I was in a great house. Anytime there was a revival meeting, I was at the great house. Anytime there was a preaching service, Service, Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. I was at a great house. If I was if I was sick uh, at home, uh, they were sure to take me to the great house on Wednesday night, Sunday night, uh, uh, Sunday morning. I was always in the great house. I often tell people I was raised on drugs. Amen. I was drugged to church Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. Uh, just raised on drugs. Amen. But hey, I thank God tonight that I've been part of a, all my life. Forty-one years, my whole life has been uh, at the. At around the center of this one place called God's house. It's a great house. It's a great house. It's a great house because it's God's house. Hey, did you hear what I said? It's a great house 
because it's God's house. Uh, oh, oh, no, it's not Brother Painter's house. No, this isn't your house, brother. This is God's house. It isn't Matt Miller's house. This is God's house. Hey, when you came to the house tonight, hey, you didn't just come to the White House. Hey, you didn't just come to some millionaire's house. Hey, you didn't come to Michael Jordan's house. Hey, you didn't just come to some famous person's house. My friend, may I tell you that you came to the God of the universe's house tonight. May I tell you that God Almighty owns this house. Aren't you glad that you're sitting tonight in God's house? In God's house. Hey, may I tell you that when you walk up those doors, up those steps and through those doors, you ought to have the frame of mind that I'm not just going to some church. I'm going to God's house. I'm going to God's house. The church is a great house because it has a great founder. Amen. I preached on it this morning, but I'm going to say it again for those of you who weren't here this morning. Hey, we have a great founder. It wasn't founded on some man. It wasn't founded on the Westlands. It wasn't founded on Luther. It wasn't founded on Calvin. It wasn't founded on Muhammad. It wasn't founded on Joseph Smith. It wasn't founded on Buddha. It wasn't founded on some great religious leader of the day. May I go ahead and just go on record and say it was founded by our Savior Jesus. Jesus Christ. And up from the grave he arose with a mighty triumph for his foes. I thank God tonight that I am in a great house. I thank God tonight that my founder is not a dead founder. He's alive today. He rules today. He reigns today. I'm in a great house because of its founder. Amen. I'm in a great house because of its founder. Uh, Jesus Christ said, I say unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. I will build my church. I will build my church. Can I tell you whose church you're in tonight? You're in God's church. Can I tell you whose church you're in tonight? You're in Jesus Christ's church. The very church he built 2,000 years ago. May I tell you that underneath this roof, under the sound of my voice, you're in Jesus Christ Church. Amen. Hey, I'm in Jesus Christ Church. Praise be to God. It has a great founder. It has a great founder. Hey, I thank God for the founder. It's a great house because of the great founder. But not only that, the church is a great house because it has a great foundation. It was built upon the apostles. Amen. It was built upon the apostles. The Bible tells us very clearly in Ephesians chapter number two, it was built upon the foundation of the apostles. The foundation of the apostles. Can you think about the apostles and who those men were? Can you think about how great those men of God were? Can you think that every one of them were martyrs? And this church that you're sitting in tonight was built upon the foundation of the apostles. It's a great church. It's a great house. It's a great house because of a great founder. It's a great house because of the great foundation. Hey, it's a great house. I like this because of the great figure it costs to purchase it. Because of the great figure it cost to purchase it. The Bible says in Acts chapter number 20, 28, uh, it says unto the overseers that they take heed unto themselves to feed the flock of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. Can I tell you what the figure price was to buy this house you're sitting in? Can I tell you what the payment was for the house you're sitting in? Oh, may I go ahead and just tell you that it costs the blood of our Savior. Hey, may I tell you that when his blood shed, he was purchasing his church. My friend, may I tell you what a great figure price was put upon the church. Hey, you're sitting in a great place tonight, man. Hey, can I go ahead and just go on record and say, you're not just sitting in some house. You're sitting in a great house tonight. A great house tonight. It's great because of his founder. It's great because of his foundation. It's great because of the figure that it cost to purchase it, the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And not only that, it's a great house because of its function. Oh, I like the function of the church. You know what the function of the church is? The function of the church is to get souls saved. Amen. Hey, can I go ahead and just go on record and say, it's exciting when I watch people walk down the aisle and get born again. I'm never going to get tired of it. I'm never going to go ahead and just get bored when I see a convert sitting inside the house of God, first time visitor, and for the very first time, they hear a clear presentation of the gospel, and you can watch the Holy Spirit of God move upon them, and all of a sudden, they can't wait for the invitation time, and all of a sudden, amazing grace, how sweet the sound is being played, and they begin to move out of their pews, my friend, can I tell you, well, I watch them come down, and bow their knees, and receive Christ as their Savior, hey, there isn't anything greater than the function of the church. 
I love sowing and amen. I love it. I love it. Thank God today I was out sowing again, and I got to be able to see a 48-year-old man saved, born again. I'm talking about a black man standing on a street corner. He thanked me. He said, Pastor Miller, thank you for stopping me. I'm talking about tears just rolling down the corners of his cheeks. I'm talking about when he saw the gospel, what Jesus Christ did for him, and that he saw that Jesus became sin for him, and that he didn't have to go to hell, but that he could go to heaven. He gladly received Jesus Christ. Thank God for the function of soul winning. Amen. Amen. Hey, do you know how come you can't get happy in church? How long has it been since you've seen somebody saved? How long has it been since you've been through the gospel? How long has it been since you've taken the Bible and shown somebody, yourself personally, how they can know for sure that they're going to heaven? Hey, there ain't nothing like it when somebody gets born again. My friend, that's the function of the church. That's the life of the church. That's the heartbeat of the church. Thank God tonight I'm in a great house. Amen. Amen. It's a great house because of the founder. It's a great house because of the foundation. It's a great house because of the figure it took to purchase it. It's a great house because of its function. You know what I like about the church? Not only does it get souls saved, but it puts lives back together. <laughs> I can remember as a pastor, when I first became pastor of the Cornerstone Baptist Church, we had a family come to our church. Oh, I, I can't even say that you can call it a family. It was a mother and two teen girls and one little young uh, daughter that they had and, uh, and a live-in boyfriend. Now, that's hardly a family, isn't it? And then they were sitting in the house of God, hearing preaching and sermons that they had never heard before. And all of a sudden, you know, they would start coming through the handshaking line, and I noticed this 15-year-old girl named Tiffany. And I noticed that she had an earring hanging out of her nose, and I noticed that earring hanging out of her eyebrow, and I noticed that stud inside of her ear, and I noticed that little lip ring inside of her lip, and I noticed the black fingernails and the tight Levi's, and most of you go ahead and be a critic of it. I wish you could see her today, amen. <laughs> I wish you could take a look at her today. I wish you could see her as she sings in a teen choir today. I wish you could see how God changed her today. My friend, the function of the church is to take those who are lost in sin and show them that there's a way out. My friend, can I tell you that, hey, when she got rid of Black Sabbath, she got rid of the earrings. When she got rid of Black Sabbath, hey, those studs came out of the eyebrows and out of the lips. Hey, when she got herself a good old-fashioned Bible and a good old-fashioned preacher, my friend, my I tell you, something began to work in her life. And, and I tell you that even last Thursday night, she was carrying her New Testament, going out soul winning. Hey, I just want to say, thank God for the great house. It changes lives. It changes lives. You say, you always scream and yell when you preach. I love it, amen. <laughs> My voice don't like it, but I love it, amen. Just get her on, amen. And hey, hey, it gives a clear direction. I like it. It gives hey, the church gives a clear direction where you're going. Yeah. Where you're going. Amen. That points people the way. I like looking at the new converts like Swan and Ashley sitting in there. And they got a whole pew packed now with their brothers and their sisters and their aunts and their uncles. And they're all cramming into one pew. And oh, they just got born again. They just got saved. Hey, they just got out of the Catholic church. And now they're bringing their Catholic family members. And their Catholic family members are sitting in the house of God with them. And I watched this brother and I watched his sister in law come walking down the aisle last Sunday. And I watched him get born again and watch them get saved. I, I just want to say I thank God tonight for the great house. It's a great house. It's a great house. It's a great house because of its founder. It's a great house because of the foundation. It's a great house because of the figure it took to purchase that. It's a great house because of its function. I must hasten. It's a great house because of its family. <laughs> uh, look who you're sitting with. Huh? Think about where you could be if you weren't saved tonight. Belling it up to some old bar, some slobbering drunk across the table from you. No, you're sitting in the house of God. No, you're sitting inside of a pew. You're not shooting your veins full of drugs. You're not waking up in the morning not knowing who you slept with that night, knowing whether or not you got some venereal disease. My friend, I tell you, bless God. You're sitting inside the house of God tonight. You're not laying in some gutter. You're not underneath some trash can. My friend, may I tell you, you're in God's house tonight. 
And you're with God's family. Amen. I'm with the family of God. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. It's a great house. It's a great house. Oh, it's a great house also because of its future. <laughs> because of its future. Can I just go on record and say tonight, this world is not my home. Let me say it again. This world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. The angels beckon me from heaven's open shore. And I can't fill a home in this world anymore. Hey, I have a great future. I'm going to heaven, amen. Hey, there's streets of gold. There's a mansion up there. But above all things, there is my Savior, who one of these days I've heard preached about for 41 years, one of these days that man I've preached about personally for over 15 years, one of these days, these knees are going to bow and I'm going to get to see him face to face. Praise God. I got a great future. 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 I have a brother on the other side I get to see one day. I got aunts and uncles. I got a grandma. I got a grandpa. I got family members on the other side. Hey, think about that glad reunion day. I say tonight, thank God for the house of God. It's a great house. Now, I wish I could just preach on this subject alone, but I can't. That's all introduction, Amen. I must preach on the vessels in the great house. I must preach on the vessels in the great house. When I look in verse number 20, it says, But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. Do you know who the vessels are in the great house? You are. Do you know who makes up the vessels in the great house? Isn't it sad that you're in the great house, but some of you are vessels of dishonor? Isn't it sad? Isn't it sad that there are people who come to the house of God, oh, they're in a great house, but they're vessels of dishonor. They're vessels of wood and earth. Oh, what a sad commentary to know that you sat in a great house, but you were just a vessel of wood. And earth. Just a vessel of wood and earth. A dishonorable vessel. You know, when I think about the two types of vessels mentioned here, I've come to find out that there are those that are just commonplace. Wood and earth. Did you know you can walk out the two doors here and down the stairs and don't have to go very far before you find yourself a tree? They're everywhere. In fact, this building is put together by wood and earth. Just dirt. Just held together by common material. Wood and earth. You can go outside and scrape up some dirt if you want to. It's just wood and earth. It's a common material. Just commonplace. I mean... It's easily replaceable. It's just common material. The common vessels in the house of God, the Bible refers to them as wood and earth. Wood is a common material. Dirt is earth and dirt is common. Things that are common, my friend, are things that are ordinary. Ordinary. Ordinary is just commonplace. There's no special qualities in wood. There's no special qualities in dirt. There's no special qualities in earth. It's just commonplace. It's just run of the meal. It's that which is ordinary. It's that which is uh, uh, done by everybody. Isn't it amazing? I, I, I want to say this, but isn't it amazing that our teenagers strive to be so different but look like every other teenager? Huh, they strive to be so different, but they all have to push their pants down. 
They strive so hard to be so different, but they all have to have the same fads and the same hairdo and the same hairstyle. Oh, they're working hard to be different, but they're just ordinary. The average teenager you find in the church, you can find in your mall. Just common, ordinary teenagers. Oh, the only difference is they say they have Christ, but you wouldn't know it if they didn't say it. They're just common, run-of-the-mill, average, ordinary. I mean, they're just as close to the bottom as they are at the top. Isn't it sad that you can be in a great house tonight and just be a vessel of wood and earth, common, ordinary? You know what makes a church member common and ordinary? Let me give you a few things. I believe one of the most common and ordinary things you'll find about ordinary wooden earthen vessels of Christians is that they don't give any support to their pastor. I'm not talking about financial support. I'm just talking about getting in behind the pastor and supporting them. I'm talking about when he gets up behind the pulpit to preach that they say, that's my pastor. Yeah. Man, I'm excited about who my pastor is. But no, the common ordinary one is critiquing every word he says. The common ordinary one can't wait till Sunday afternoon so they can have roast preacher. The common ordinary one can't wait till they can go gossip with their friends about their pastor. Oh, you're just wooden earth. You're in a great house, but you don't know what you're missing out on. Hey, you're not supporting your pastor. You're not behind the program. You won't even come to a Baptist Heritage Conference where his wife put thousands of hours into hundreds of hours of cutting out letters and decorating the banner and hey if somebody had to work and clean and all I mean his heart was that you'd be here the wooden earth ones aren't here tonight the wooden earth ones aren't here tonight I hope they buy the CD in fact don't even make them buy it just give it to them amen just hand it to them say I want you to listen to this message just tell me which one you think you are Wood and earth. They won't support the meetings. They won't support the program. They stand in opposition of everything that goes bad. They feel like they have to be the church priest and the church critiquer. They feel like they have to keep the pastor in order. My friend, may I tell you, I'm quite fed up that we don't hold to the position again, the man of God and the rightful place that God has given him, and elevate the position of the man of God. I'm not saying that you elevate the man. I'm saying that you elevate the position of the man. The position of the man. Amen. I was going through a lawsuit in uh, Grand Junction, Colorado, when I first became a pastor there. And I had a teen girl, when I was preaching one day, talk back to me. Now, like my dad, I can't hide that very good. So I just happened to preach on ye rebels. Stinking little rebel sitting in here talking back to the man of God. She already brought down one man of God. And that's what the church was getting sued over. She already brought down one man of God. And I just got up and preached a whole sermon on ye rebels. I didn't know I was going to be sued. I did not know the church was going to be sued at that time. It wasn't long after that message I had a lawsuit dropped on my desk. And here's what the lawsuit was. The lawsuit had to do with the former pastor, and it said negligent supervision of the pastor. The church people were being sued for not supervising their pastor. That's what they were being sued for. We went to court, and before you go to court, you have to have those depositions. You have to be deposed. And I sat inside of a courtroom with an attorney, and it was the girl's attorney. Here was my former organist and her daughter. And we were sitting in court uh, in, the, in, the, in the little chamber there. I had my attorney and myself. And they said, Pastor Miller, we're thinking about opening up um, a, a lawsuit against you for defamation of character. I said, all right. I said, what does that mean? They said, let's, let's, let's play a little tape for you. They played a tape, and it was a message I recognized well. Ye rebels. 
He said, do you remember Pastor Miller preaching this message? I said, yes. He said, do you realize that you're preaching it to one particular person? I said, that's most of my sermons. He says, you realize that the young lady that's sitting over here was one that you were defaming and calling a rebel. I said, sir, do you realize that in the Bible that uh, Moses got up and called his whole, his old nation, ye rebels? I said, my job as a pastor is to preach sermons like that. He says, just in the, who in the world do you think you are to call her a rebel? I said, sir, can I ask you a question? He said, yes. I said, are you an attorney at law? He said, yes, I am. I said, sir, I said, have you ever gone into court? And while trying a case, felt like the judge was treating you unfairly. He said, yes, I have. I said, sir, can I ask you another question? Have you ever been held in contempt of court? He said, yes, I have. I said, sir, I guess it just goes to prove that when you walk into that courtroom, I don't care what your position is, you better respect the judge. You better respect the judge. I said, you may not like that judge as a man, but you better respect his position. And sir, any time a person walks inside the house of God where I preach, I demand that they respect the position of the office of the man of God. May I tell you that there's a bunch of wooden earthens, vessels. I've seen members like them come and go over the years. They're just common material. They're just commonplace. They'll come in and stir up the pot a little bit, but they never stick around, and they're easily replaceable. They're just wood and earth. Just wood and earth. As easy as they came in, they'll leave and go out and never show support of the pastor. Just a wooden vessel in the great house. Not only do they not give their support to the pastor, but these wooden earthen vessels, you'll never find them in a position of service. They never take up and ask the pastor if they could be an usher. They never ask the pastor if they can be a greeter. They never ask the pastor if they can sing in the choir. They never ask the pastor if they can go out soul winning. They never ask the pastor if they can be a Sunday school teacher. They never ask the pastor if they can go ahead and vacuum the church. They never ask the pastor if they can help cut out letters. They never ask the pastor if they can go ahead and help decorate for the upcoming meeting. Hey, they never want to find a place of service. My friend, they're just common wooden earth. All they want to do is come and take up eight inches of space. And by the way, those same wooden earthen people will never sacrifice. They'll never give a tithe. They'll never give an offering. They'll go ahead and take it in and take it in and take it in. But they'll never give back. They're just wooden earthen vessels in a great house. Sad, 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 sad state that you can sit in the house of God and just be a wooden earthen vessel. No service. No sacrifice, no support. You'll never drive a bus. You'll never go ahead and go to door knocking. You'll never go ahead and get involved in the program of the church. Hey, you're just a wooden earthen vessel in a great house. You fail to see the importance of soul winning. The pastor says we're going to have a soul winning, soul winning meeting on Thursday night. <coughs> they never show up. We're going to go out soul winning on Saturday. They never show up. Pastor gets up and he works himself up in a lather and a froth trying to get the people excited about a campaign, but they never show excitement. Never get excited. Never get motivated. Never get moved. And it feels like the pastor's got the church and he's got, come on, come on. And they're digging in like an old meal, being drugged by the pastor as he's trying to get them to come on. Hey, they're just wooden earthen vessels and they slow down the work of God. Hey, when you spot them, preach them out. So where did you learn that? From my dad. <laughs> when you spot them, they're just going to slow down the church anyway. They're going to take up all your time with counseling anyway. They're going to take up all their time with all the problems anyway. Just go ahead and preach them out. Why? Because there'll be another wooden earth and vessel come in to take their place. They're just common, ordinary vessels. In fact, they've been to 15 other churches before they found yours. Huh? 
time they critiqued 15 other pastors before they critiqued yours. They're just wooden, earthen vessels. Their roots never got down deep. They never read the Word of God. They never walk with God. They're never excited about the program. They're just common wood and earthen vessels. These wooden, earthen vessels, they, they don't show support to the pastor. They have no position of service. They feel like they have to go ahead and be the critique of the church and go ahead and stand in judgment of everything that goes on. They never see the importance of soul winning, and they have no personal separation. Yeah, come on, that's right. They have no personal separation. You see, when you're a vessel of wooden earth, you don't care what goes into you. When you're a vessel of wooden earth, you don't care what you're filled up with. You don't care if your mind's saturated by the pornography on the internet. You'll just pour it in. You'll just, don't get quiet on me now. Huh? You don't mind getting on those internet sites as long as your wife doesn't know about it. How long as your preacher don't know about it. My friend, the problem is you don't understand. You already showed what you are. You're a wooden earthen vessel. Because you don't care what goes into you. You don't care what kind of filth gets inside of it. Hey, you're just a wooden earthen vessel. You don't care how you decorate the outside. You don't care what's on the inside. You're just commonplace wooden earthen vessel. Amen. Huh? Ladies, you don't mind if you show off some knee. And let me just go on record and say that in fundamentalism today, the dresses are getting shorter and shorter and shorter. And my friend, if you're sitting down, dear lady, and you're having to pull it down to try to cover your knees, you're wearing something too short. You're showing too much skin. But the reason why you'd wear something like that is because you're just commonplace wooden earth. The reason why you don't mind wearing that slit that goes up the half back of your thigh is because you're wooden earth. The reason why you teen boys don't care about specking your hair and looking like the world is you're just wooden earth. Just wooden earth. You don't care what you put on it, and you don't care what you put in it. You're just, hey, I wonder if we got some pastors who get behind the pulpit that are just wooden earth. I wonder if we have some youth pastors who are just wooden earth. Huh? I, wa- I wonder if that's the product that your kids are learning from you and from your example. Wow, right. Amen. Huh? Yeah, come on. Huh? What are you flipping through on the channels at night when your wife's in bed? Come on. Huh? Good. Come on. What are you parking on and watching? Amen? Amen. You big hypocrite, you're going to get up and preach on Sunday morning and think that you're walking with God and reading your Bible and praying. And my friends, you know as well as you, uh, you, you just got out the Sunday school lesson and just started studying that morning. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Huh? Isn't it sad that your young people don't have a person who walks with God? Isn't it sad your church doesn't have a pastor who walks with God? Isn't it sad that your pastor doesn't have a fire and a, fe- a zeal and a fervor to win a soul? He's just become wooden earth too. On, I'm not talking about Pastor Todd. I'm just talking about in general. That's right. Yep. Amen. Yep. In a great house, we have a lot of pastors get up behind the pulpits. Yes, sir. And they don't care what they were filled with that week. They don't care. They're just a wooden earthen vessel in a great house. Oh, they're saved on their way to heaven. They're just wooden earth, just commonplace, running the mill, ordinary. That's why they never see people walk down the aisle and get born again. That's why they never see the conviction of God fall. That's why they never see the Holy Spirit move. That's why when you come to church, it feels like good night, man. The whole thing's dead. We ought to put a shovel of dirt on it. It's just wooden earth. Praise be to God, and may God always work this way. But I'm glad I've stepped into a position where my dad has had it made where there's liberty for the Holy Spirit of God to move. Liberty. 
And it's good when you spend time in the Word of God. And it's been good when you spend time on your knees. Hey, you know what? I'll tell you how you spot them. Wooden earthen vessels. They have no song. They won't pick up a hymn book. And they won't sing. You just watch them. Wooden earthen vessels sitting in the house of God. They don't care about the song service. They ain't got nothing to sing about. That's right. They got no song in their heart. Exactly right. They got no joy. Hey, you see, they went out so you show me the guy who's got that hymn book open and he's singing victory in Jesus and his mouth is so wide you can see his tonsil on the back of his throat. And you know he can't carry a tune if it had handles on it. But he's singing it and belting it out. I'll tell you, that man's a Sunday school teacher. He's probably the bus driver. He's probably the bus captain. He's probably out there solely on Thursday and on Saturday and involved in the military ministry and the homeless ministry and the shelter ministry. And he's probably involved in every ministry in the church. And he's there singing it out. The other ones don't have any song. Vessels of wood and earth, look at them. Vessels of wood and earth, they have no sparkle. Come on, man. <laughs> they never walk in happy. <laughs> yeah, that's right. yeah. uh, they never walk into the house of God saying, I'm glad to be here. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Hey, you never see them sitting on the edge of the pew when preachers going on. Yeah. Right. They got no sparkle. Yeah. They're sitting there like this. I've heard this a thousand times. He'll be hitting pants again. <laughs> or they're sitting in church going like this. <laughs> no sparkle. Yeah, I like the guy who's serving God, man. <laughs> He's hanging off the bus when it's coming in. Yeah. He's like, woohoo! <laughs> He's excited. He's got some sparkle in him. He's excited. He's behind the man of God. I say, woo, preacher. You've seen him. Look at the choir loft sometime. You'll spot him in a heartbeat. There's that good old soul winning faithful woman, and she's smiling and singing out loud. The other one, she can't even open her lips. They have no sparkle. You know what about wooden earthen vessels? They're easily broken. You take a clay vessel and drop it, what's it going to do? Break. What a lot of you pastors are walking around with, you got a bunch of wooden vessels and you're tiptoeing around them saying, I hope I don't break somebody in here. Friend, they're going to break. Sooner or later, they're going to break. Might as well just break it early. You can get another one take their place. You know what wood and earth is? Wood and earth and vessels, they're made of nature. They're natural. Most of your wood and earth and vessels in your church are the natural man. The natural man receiveth not the things of God, neither can he know them. Why? Because they're spiritually discerned. Don't you be fooled to think that most everybody that comes in your church is saved. Right, come on. Right, right. Those one who fight the program, those who get be not, not behind you, those who won't serve, those who won't soul win, those who won't sparkle, those who won't be, uh, those that are easily broken, they're probably natural. Yes, Just wood and earth. I must close tonight. But not only in a great house will you find wood and earth and vessels, <laughs> but praise God, you'll find those gold and silver vessels. Gold and silver vessels. Come on. <laughs> Good. Now, you said, Brother Miller, what's the difference between the two? First, to be a vessel of gold and silver, don't get proud. 
if you're a vessel of gold and silver. Because you had to be mined out of the earth. Don't forget where you came from. You see, silver had to come out of the earth. It had to be mined out of the earth. It had to go through some fires. It had to be purified. My friend, before it became a silver vessel, it had to be mined out of So when you're sitting among the wooden earth, don't sit there puffed up. Don't forget where you came from. You're just wooden earth. My friend, if you've ever been born again, you've been mined out of the earth. And the only reason that you and I would ever be gold or silver vessels is because of God's good grace. That he was willing to mine us out of the earth. Oh, don't forget, you used to be wood. You used to be earth. But God changed you and made you gold and silver. And here's what I like about it. God didn't take you when you were wood and earth and just overlay you with silver. <laughs> you're not just overlaid with silver. You're a new creation in Christ Jesus. You're through and through silver. Hey, did you hear what I said? You're through and through silver. You're through and through gold. Hey, you're just not overlaid. God wants you inside and outside. He made you a new creation. Vessels of gold and silver. You know what they are? They're fashioned by an experienced craftsman. This vessel here, it's not common. It was mined out of the earth. It was furnished. It was fashioned by some very skilled hands. Huh? Boy, don't we as pastors wish we had a church full of those. Huh? Vessels of gold and silver, you know what they are? They're treasured. If I grab this out of a out of a cabinet inside my home, a, what do you call them, a china hutch? If I grab one of these silver vessels out of the china hutch and go walking outside, and my wife says, uh, 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 where are you going? Well, honey, I've got to change some oil or anything in my car. <laughs> she had, uh-uh, uh-uh, you can't use that. Take this. That was my great, 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 great grandma's. And it's going right back into the hutch. That thing went through two house fires. Did you hear what I said? It went through two house fires. The reason they're treasured is because they are long-lasting. They're passed down through the ages. And they can withstand fire. You know what I like about the silver vessels in the church? They can handle the fiery preaching from the pulpit. You know what I like about them? Boy, when something goes ahead and they're going wrong in their life and they need to be polished up and the pastor puts the brittle pad to them, they can handle it. Because they just know the pastor's trying to work on them a little bit. Vessels of gold and silver. You know what I like about it? In the bottom of this cup, it's stamped RWP. <laughs> tells you who made it. You know what? Vessels of silver and of gold, they have a seal upon them. Yes, sir. Yeah. That seal is by the skilled hands of Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, other pastors come in and say, man, I wish I had a man like him in my church. You say, stay away from him. Yeah. He belongs with my china over here. He's been fashioned by God for the work he does. You know what I like about vessels of gold and silver? They don't take the glory. They reflect it. You know whose image I see in here? I see mine. You know what a vessel of gold and silver does in the church? They reflect the glory of God. They reflect the one who made them. I mean, you can just see God all over them. They're reflecting God's glory. Oh, they're not taking the glory. 
They're the ones when they brought in 120 on their bus, they're not walking around saying, look what I did. Yeah, they're saying, glory to God. Tears coursing down their cheeks. God, I couldn't have done it without you. Yeah, God, it was you that brought them in. And they just reflect the glory of God. They just reflect the glory of God. They're not standing in the line for the praise of men. They go back and get on their knees in their dark closet, or their prayer closet. Say, God, it was all you today. It was all you today. Vessels of gold and silver. What I like about them. They have a song. Amen. They have a song. Yes. Good. They're ready to sing. Yes, sir. They're ready to be used. Yeah. Amen. They have a song. Let me sing. Vessels of gold and silver are used for a special purpose. They don't mind bringing a homeless man to church in their car. It's a special purpose. Yes, they don't mind that a bus kid's little snotty nose got their jacket all pinched together with snot. Because it's a special purpose. They don't mind walking to the hospital, sitting by the bed of an elderly woman who's drawing her last breaths, just to sit there and read the Word of God to her. Because they want to be used. <laughs> You know what I like about vessels of gold and silver? They're easily cleaned. <laughs> They're easily cleaned. I'm just going to ask you tonight. In a great house, you're in one. There's two types of vessels. When God looks out of heaven, which one does he see you to be? Yeah. 